a lot of the discussion now focuses on Article 50. Will it, will it not be invoked? When will it be invoked? Um, and on how the UK would retain access to the single market. The financial industry requires a certain degree of political protection that simply they're not going to have if the UK is not involved in decision making in Brussels. So there's going to be lots of opportunities to uh, introduce small regulations, um, maybe consumer protection regulations, other kind of little things that will make it very hard to um, to keep exporting financial services from the UK to the mainland. I think the uncertainty is costly, but on the other hand, the longer we manage to wait now, the less likely it is, I think, that Article 50 is actually invoked. Basically, I think what's going to happen now is that there's going to be a fairly significant recession in the UK. And once people realize that there are real economic costs, in particular the people who were hoping that sort of an end to migration will improve their, uh, their economic situation are going to find that it's going to worsen significantly. People have looked long and hard in the data at sort of costs of migration. So for example, this idea that foreigners are taking jobs or displacing uh, people who don't have a lot of human capital. Um, it's very hard to find that in the data. Really, even if you look, just kind of very simply look at sort of the correlation between uh, unemployment, changes in unemployment, and changes in migration US, in, in, uh, in British regions, you don't, you don't find any association. And the best work that we have on this actually shows that there is no effect, or essentially no effect, of uh, migration on wages. There is some evidence at the very, very low end of the income distribution that some, some, uh, some of those people are suffering. But through the rest of the income distribution, it looks actually more like there's a positive effect. Basically, what my research suggest suggests is that uh, you take in a bunch of poor migrants now, and 30 years down the road, uh, those migrants are going to facilitate investment uh, uh, in the UK or uh, in their host country. Uh, and in particular, if, the, if, their, if their country of origin takes off economically, then you have large dividends from that. My sense is that people are kind of hoping that it's going to be fudged somehow, and Brexit in some form is not, it's not going to happen. And essentially the proposal at the moment is to put a border or, well, so, so there's going to have to be a border somewhere. Either there's a border between Scotland and the EU, or there's going to be a border between England and Scotland. Scotland interacts an enormous amount both with the rest of Europe and with the UK. Putting a border somewhere is very costly. We have lots of research in economics that basically talks about the border effect. So if you look at sort of like the, tr the amount of economic interaction between Seattle and San Francisco, it's orders of magnitude larger than the economic interactions between Seattle and Vancouver, for example. And all of that lack of economic interaction between Seattle and Vancouver means fewer jobs, means fewer opportunities for people to do business and fewer opportunities to create wealth for, for the economy. I think that a breakup of the UK would be very costly for the various parts of the UK. Um, both because of like a, a long period of economic uncertainty and political uncertainty and because you're going to have to put that border somewhere. London is sort of a natural hub for young people in the EU that are, you know, educated and trying to like, you know, start new businesses and have a lot of energy to do stuff to meet. In the long term, the EU is going to lack a center. Maybe Dublin is going to substitute to some, to some extent. It's going to lack a social center. It has a political center, but the question is where is the social center? Uh, similar to like the role that you know New York and LA maybe play for, for the US. But overall, I think the effects on the EU are going to be limited, uh, just because it's much bigger than the UK.